Hello, I'm Steve Venner, G0TAN, and I provide technical and engineering support here at Martin Lynch's, um, our new store in Staines. Staines upon Thames, would you have it? Um, what I'm going to do today is give you a brief demonstration of the new Mydell uh, Seed Studio RF Explorer 6G combo. So, this unit follows on from their successful range of handheld RF. Um, test equipment for design specifically for like amateur radio operators. Um, we have the 3G combo here, we have an RF signal generator up to 6 gigs and this one is the 6G combo so it basically covers, um, it's a spectrum analyzer and covers everything from 15 megahertz all the way up to 2.7 gigs and then again from 4.85 gigs all the way up to 6.1 gigs. Um, so, so it's a spectrum analyzer, um, it also does Wi-Fi analysis as well so the good things about it has, uh, with this, the firmware inside is upgradable and you get free um, up, lifetime upgrades for as long as you own the product. The, um, the other good thing about it is that a lot of people have suggested items to put into these products. And so uh, Seed Studio or RF Explorer will actually take those comments on board and try and implement those on their product roadmap. Um, this unit actually contains a high capacity lithium polymer battery. Uh, gives you about six hours, 16 hours of uh, operation. Uh, and it's actually charged by a USB port on the bottom, which I'll be talking about a little bit uh, later. The, there's also some Windows software, which goes along, runs alongside this, so you can run it in conjunction with your PC. Um, that is also open source software. Again, it's updatable by um, people in um, the community. So again, they suggest features and things that are nice, nice to have and they get implemented. So um, this unit, um, it doesn't have a six gig signal generator on it. Um, some of the units do, uh, this one here. If you want a signal generator to go up to six gigs, then recommend the, uh, the handheld RF signal generator. First thing we normally do um, on these videos is to tell you what's actually inside the box, what you get for your money. So the first thing is obviously the RF Explorer itself, and that comes complete with three antennas. Uh, two are already fixed on the unit at the moment, and there's another um, antenna here which is a little bit bendable. Um, you can, depending on the frequency that you want to operate the unit on, you change the antennas over. Uh, I'll come on to a bit more of that later on. The there are actually other antennas that you can get which are more specific to the frequencies that you might want to be um, operating on, but they are available as options direct from Seed Studio or um, RF Explorer themselves. So the other thing that you get with it is a rather nice carry case, sort of, uh, they call it an EVA carry case that protects the unit from any damage. Um, what you don't get with it um, is a user manual and you don't get the software to run on your PC so you can control this from a PC. Um, those items are actually downloadable uh, from the Seed Studio Stroke RF Explorer website which you can find from our website. Um, the other thing that you will need at some point in time because the software, the firmware inside the unit is always being updated uh, you can always get the latest firmware for the unit, again, from RF Explorer website. So uh, that's it, that's what you get. Right, um, so we've done what's in the box. Um, what I'm going to do now is give you a, a, a very quick glimpse into how easy this unit is to operate. Uh, we start off when you first power the unit on. Um, let me just do that, so you can start from, from the beginning and then we switch it on. We get a brief introduction to what the software is on there and it goes straight into spectrum analyzer mode. So at the moment we're going from the start frequency which is about 2.4 gigs all the way up to 2.47 gigs. So we've got some signals going on there, I don't know what they are, uh, probably some sort of Wi-Fi signal. Um, so, but basically all the parameters that you can see on the screen, there's a battery indication, there's a number of sweeps per second, the units that we can see here is going from currently from about minus 120 dBm all the way up to about minus 35 dBm. Um, you can change the units into microvolts if you want to, things like that. Um, there is also some indications as to what the DSP algorithm is being used and that determines how fast it's sweeping, things like that. 
So all that, those things are, uh, can be set up in the menu. So what we're going to do, there's basically four menus. So just press the menu button and you'll get the first one. So this is the operational menu, operational mode. So the first one is the spectrum analyzer, which is what we were just looking at. Uh, the next one down is the RF generator. Now if I select that, you'll see that it says it's actually not um, available in this mode. That's because this, this unit, as I said earlier, it's always being updated. They're always Im improving things. So that is reserved for future use. So at some point in time, it's most likely that they're going to be producing uh, a signal generator. But at the moment in this unit, it's not there. So we just get out of that. Uh, the next one down is a Wi-Fi analyzer. If I select that, it looks specifically at your local Wi-Fi signals. And you can do some analysis uh, later on. Um, if you go onto the web website, they'll give you specific details on how to do that. Okay, so, and then go back to the menu system again. Then the next one is your details of your RF connections. That's basically these two antenna ports on the top. Okay, it says on the left-hand side we've got the little 4.8 to 6.1 gig antenna and then on the right-hand side we've got the 15 megahertz to 2.7 gigs antenna. That's this one over here. Okay, so that's all that does. It doesn't do anything. It's just some information, really. Uh, going back to the menu and then what you have there, the final one, is the about. And that, what that does is just tell you what the software version is, um, the website and... Um, the date of the software. So that's the 13th of January 2015. So it's fairly up to date. Okay, so that's that. Right, so that was the operational mode. If you press the menu again, you'll get, when you're in the frequency menu, that allows you to set up the center frequency, the frequency span, uh, stop frequency, uh, start frequency, and the last one is the module. At the moment we're in the 15 megahertz to the 2.7 gigahertz range. If we wanted to go up to the other module and start using this and see what's going on up there, start using this antenna, then I'll change that in a minute. So you, what you can do is set any one of these up, just hit the enter button, and then it'll give you a little editing window. You can use the cursor keys here to edit and change the frequency uh, to whatever you want to do. And as you change that, the other ones will change appropriately. So let me just enter that to get that back. And then what we do is going to, what we do now is change the module. All we have to do is just select, highlight it, press the enter, and then it's now saying that the top one is active. Now we're looking at the frequencies on this antenna here. So, let me change it back. So, okay, and then next thing down, that was the frequency menu. The next one is the attenuator menu. This is where it tells you, you've got the calculator mode, which is you're telling the internal DSP um, what to do. Uh, some of the features currently um, it's saying look at what the max hold is you've got the top dbm reference as we would display that's currently set to minus 35 dbm you've got the bottom dbm menu minus 120 uh, the iterations is again to do with the dsp inside the unit that tells the dsp how many iterations you want to perform on a specific uh, specific frequency and that information that's produced by the DSP is then displayed on the display. Uh, the next one down is the offset. So the offset is used um, if you are wanting to transmit into this unit, directly into it, rather than going through the antenna. They have a plus 5 dBm limit, which isn't that much, but the idea is you, you don't want too much. You, want, you need something to protect it if you're going to be transmitting a bit more higher power than that. Um, and you can buy, again, as options, which are uh, all uh, given to you in the, um, or the options are available, that are available, are given in the user manual, again, downloadable from the website. You'll see there's actually various attenuators that you can put onto either of these two sockets. Um, and when you use those attenuators, you can actually do the offset, change the offset here to make it seem that the, you can actually see exactly the right power that you're actually going entering into the, the unit. You don't have to worry about recalculating in your head what the offset is. Okay. So, and then the last option on there is the number of units. You can either have dBm or you can have uh, dB microvolts or dBm. Okay. The last menu option is the actual configuration. So that you can set up the backlighting. Um, if I select that, we can go nothing, a little bit more, a bit more, a bit more, up to max. 
the, the contrast of the display, same thing again, you can have very weak, very strong contrast. So that looks pretty good. Um, the bode rate for the USB connection on the bottom. Um, the drawing mode, uh, whether you want to use vectors, vector graphics or fill graphics, some one is faster than the other and you can also have a marker on there so that you can actually record the peak levels as it's going along and you can set the type of DSP whether you want it auto, whether you want it as a filter or whether you want it very very fast and if I go back now to the menu and uh, let's go back to the display if I can get that right, it's, it's, no worries, spectrum analyzer there we go now we can see it's actually updating a lot lot faster in real time so that's pretty much it as far as the menu you get uh, apart from the on and off switch at the top um, very simple and quite useful so there you go okay so this is the PC version of the Windows software that will control the RF Explorer um, this is actually quite a lot easier to use than the, the actual unit itself because basically you don't have to go through any of the menu options to select things so if you can see here at the top of the screen, we have the center frequency, the span, uh, automatically set start and stop frequencies, and the upper and uh, lower and upper limits. So if I want to change the frequency to say 144, we just type in 144, we hit the send button, and it automatically updates. And now we should get a, a live feed. So this is with a uh, antenna on the top of the unit there's a few stations out there obviously we can't listen to them to see what they are but there's a few few stations around two, two meter stations so um, that's one thing you can do uh, you can also have at the top here you can dis display a waterfall um, it takes a little while so you can actually see uh, 3d version real time um, power channels this is the av average uh, power that we're actually centered on 144 at the moment so you can actually see the uh, especially the um, signal strength at that particular frequency um, all the configuration is done here um, it's it's very easy to use so you go back to the spectrum analyzer um, all on the right hand side you can set the top limits the bottom limits um, what else can you do and it's, it's real time you can actually save this actually has a video file so you can actually play it back later on so that was that uh, one thing i didn't mention earlier on was that uh, the items that are shipped with you as I mentioned about the three antennas and th things like that one thing that you will need for this is actually a usb cable uh, that's because the internal batteries are charged by usb and if you want to use the pc as uh, a way of controlling the unit, you'll need it for that. Okay, well, that was a very, very brief introduction to the RF Explorer 6G Combo. One of the advantages of it is, be that besides its small size, um, is the actual cost. If you are interested in doing things, uh, RF um, development, things like that, Usually a spectrum analyzer is what is really a necessity to, a necessary tool for you to use. Now, normal spectrum analyzers are huge, they're quite large, quite bulky, and they cost maybe tens of thousands of pounds. Whereas this, this thing is a fraction of the cost and it's portable. Um, okay, it only does about 80%, 90% of what a full uh, blown spectrum analyzer can do but most of the time most people that are experimenting with um, electronics uh, RF design things like that they don't need anything that big that so that soon on so for a, a, a really good sort of amateur radio use um, this this is a, a great piece of kit you want to find out more about it uh, there's a lot more information on the web on the RF Explorer website um, yes, so you can download the manual. The manual itself gives you a lot more information of, of available options and antennas, um, uh, attenuators and things like that. So, um, so if you've got any questions about it, uh, please feel free to give us a call here, Martin Lynch and Sons. Ask for Steve, that's me, um, and I'll do my best to help you. Uh, but thank you again for watching. Thanks.